We're going to take a look at how the stack works and how it's manipulated by function calls. And to do that, we're going to use a very simple little program. Our program has two functions, main, which is where every C and C++ program starts, and main will just call say hello. Say hello will print a message on screen to ask us for our name. It will then create a 64 character buffer and read from the keyboard into that buffer. And then it will print out another message using the buffer so it will say hello to us. So if I run the program, we get our prompt. I can type in my name. And there we go. Hello, Peter. I'm going to use the debugger to look inside the program as it's running so that we can see the stack and, and see how the different parts of the program fit together. So I'm going to stop at this red dot just before it calls say hello. The debugger is quite a bit more complicated than the, the basic editor. We still have our editor window with our source code up here but we also have a bunch of other panes. This pane shows local variables. We don't actually have any at the moment, so it doesn't show anything. Up here, we get a bunch of stuff. This disassembly window shows us the executable code that makes up the program. And it shows it in a, a few different ways altogether. So we have fragments of the source code and then interspersed with them, we have the machine code, which is the actual compiled binary representation that, that the processor actually uses. And we have the assembler, which is a kind of human readable equivalent to the machine code. Next to each bit of machine code, we have the memory addresses of, of the code because every piece of code has its own memory address. Down here, we have some of the processor's registers, and there are two registers that really interest us. The first is EIP, which is the memory address of the instruction that's about to execute, or if the program is running at the address of the currently executing instruction. So that, at the moment, is set to 401043. And if we look in the disassembly window at the addresses, 401043 is the address of this call instruction. So it's stopped just before we make the call. The other really important register is ESP, which is the stack pointer. That's currently 19FF28. And I have this pane over here. This is showing us the process's memory, and I've got it set up so the top line of this window is always the address that ESP contains. So that means this line here is always the top of the stack. ESP will change every time something is pushed onto the stack. ESP will get reduced, and every time something is popped from the stack, ESP will increase but it will always be this top line here. So we're stopped just before the call instruction. Uh, the call instruction does a couple of things together all as one. The first thing it does is it pushes the return address onto the stack. So the return address is the address we come back to when the function, so in this case, say hello, is finished. And that is the address of the instruction immediately after the call instruction. So our return address is 401048. So that's what call needs to push onto the stack. To push it onto the stack, it will first make space on the top of the stack. So this is a, a four byte number, so it will reduce ESP by four, change it by four bytes. And then that, that will give memory address 19FF24 and then into address 19FF24, it will write this value. 
401048. So that means the top of the stack will contain the return value. The other thing that the call instruction does is it changes EIP, the instruction pointer. It will change it to, in, in this instance, 401000, which is the address of the say hello function. So if I run just the call instruction on its own and then stop immediately after, we will see that both of these things happen. The, the return address will get pushed onto the stack and EIP will change to 401000. And there we have it. EIP 401000. Again, that's this instruction. So as we can see from the disassembly window, the start of the say hello function. And ESP is now 19FF24. And what do we see at 19FF24 in memory? We see 401048, which is our return address. The counterpart to call is return, which is called ret. So I will just run the program until it gets there. And here we are stopped at ret. And ret does the opposite of call. So it will pop the return value from the stack. So it'll, it'll read that value and then it will add four to ESP. So the stack point will become 19FF28. And it will set EIP equal to the value that it just popped. So EIP will become 401048. So again, I run just that one instruction. And again, we see both of these things have happened. EIP is now 401048, which is correctly the instruction that was just after the call instruction. And the stack is now one the stack pointer is now 1f 19ff28 and as we see the old return address has been popped off it's no longer at the top of the stack so that's how the stack pointer works it shows its most important job which is storing return addresses so that you can make function calls and return from them